New projections from Edmonds forecasting that new car sales will total 14.8 million next year. That's up 7% from its latest projection for the current year 2022. So here to discuss that and also the most important trends to watch in the new year, we want to bring in Ivan Jury. He is Edmonds Director of Insights. Ivan, it's great to see you. So certainly 2022 was a challenging year for the industry. We had higher rates. We also had the fact uh, some supply chain issues affecting companies here. Also, the fact that people were still, the consumers were facing higher prices. Is 2023 going to shape up to be maybe a stronger year for the industry? Uh, stronger in the sense of sales, definitely. I mean, we will see an increase. We'll see that bump up to like 14.8. But at the same time, are they going to be as healthy as the sales that we've seen last year? Definitely not. Um, in the sense that the automakers and dealers are not going to be getting those premiums that we've been seeing all of last year. Um, it was almost like a 18 to 16 month streak where we had seen that, you know, ATPs, average transaction prices were over MSRP. Only in November have we finally seen consumers paying a little bit under. So the sales will be good, but will it be as good and as profitable for the dealers? No, yet, not nearly as much. Hey, Ivan Pross here. So you're telling, you're saying that you'll see this recovery in 2023, but you will also have higher rates. Is that not going to dent uh, some of these sales? Certainly that's the case. And that's the reason why our expectations for sales isn't even higher, is that there are some consumers, they dropped down the last year because they didn't like the price. This time consumers are gonna drop out because they don't like the price of money. That interest rate is taking a huge dent into consumers' budgets. You know, if you look at the average transaction price of, you know, like close to $50,000 now, the amount finance is 40K, APR is 6.6%. You're looking at interest over the life of the loan for a new car, close to eight grand used cars and you have similar metrics, but the amount finance is lower. It's $10,000 interest over life alone. So we're seeing that those numbers are now cost prohibitive. Um, if you can't get like an OEM backed lower APR, like a 0%, a 1.9, something like that, you're looking at hefty finance charges over the life of a loan. Yeah, Carlin's certainly getting more expensive. Ivan, though, I guess a piece of good news, sliver of good news is the fact that new vehicle prices are expected to drop, although people are still going to be paying a pretty penny for a number of new vehicles. How big of a drop can you put quantity? I guess just put that into numbers term for us, just in terms of how big of a drop we could potentially see. Yeah. For so for most of the year, we've seen the consumers are paying an average of seven hundred dollars over MSRP. Mm -hmm. November we saw a little haircut, it was like seventeen below. Uh, you know, we're not talking about prices from years ago when consumers are easily saving two, three thousand dollars off of MSRP had incentives that were widely available, things like that. So we expect that during the next year, prices will get better. Um, don't expect to go to the dealership and find the exact same situation you did five, six years ago. Um, back then we were selling something like 17 million units a year. Uh, there were plentifully used cars uh, for sale. Um, selection was great all around. Had a lot of off lease cars. That's really not the case for next year. Um, we're still going to have consumers who are finding that the vehicles that they want just simply aren't available on the dealer's lots. So there's still gonna be people ordering cars, but there's gonna be people who order cars, but when it comes down to the F&I component, they can't afford that car. And the car might just basically fall off the truck essentially, and it might be up for grabs for someone else. But when we look at next year, definitely expect to see prices softening, um, but don't expect some blowout sales. Yeah, I mean, what's, what are the kind of trends like you guys seeing for EVs next year? You know, I did the story about how we're gonna see some cheaper EVs come to the lots, but still supply might be a little limited. Is that what you guys are kind of seeing too? Yeah, so many EVs all of last year and the year prior, we'd seen hand raisers that said that, you know, I want to buy this car sight unseen, no test drive. Launches were happening online. Consumers were saying, I want to buy these without ever seeing them. You know, people are cooked up in their house and they're buying these cars. The same thing is happening. We still see that many vehicles are essentially sold out from some of the mainstream automakers, like F-150, the Lightning, you're looking at something that's sold out for nearly two years. You know, General Motors, they're launching their you know, near $30,000 vehicle. That's going to have so many reservations that unless you act now, you're not just going to go to a dealership and find exactly what you want for sale, especially in the EV market. You know, they're still very expensive compared to their ICE counterparts. And the thing is that many of them, you know, they do have reservation lists that are either full or they're closed. And I mean, when it comes to leasing versus buying, I think that's a big decision uh, that a lot of people are up against right now, trying to figure out what makes the most sense. Certainly leasing has gotten more and more expensive. Do you expect that to continue? And will there be any deals for the buyer out there in 2023? 
you know, things might soften up a little bit when it comes to leasing, but we just see such a big hit. Leasing used to be one out of every three sales in the industry. Now it's something like 17% of sales. You know, consumers who are accustomed to leasing where you just show up, get that new car, get a great incentive where the price is lower than MSRP, the money factor is very low, the money is almost free sometimes. You know, things like that, they just don't exist anymore. Um, we're seeing that people are paying to borrow almost at the same rate as if they're financing the car. So if we do see inventories build up a bit, we might see a little bit of a return to leasing. But right now, it's very questionable. You have to really decide, is leasing for you based more upon the merits of leasing itself versus just the price point alone? 